What's going on, peeps? It's Wrath here, hanging out today, playing some Watcher of Realms, and today, we're going back to the normal campaign. <laughs> I know I said I wanted to complete more hard campaign because the rewards are simply better, but the storyline quests have told me differently. They said, go back to normal, nerd, so we're gonna do that. Um, for a couple of reasons. One, the storyline quests are very important to do. If you're, like, trying to push the game early, do not neglect these. If you get something you're stuck on, do it. Make sure you get this finished because it's going to unlock a lot of good stuff for you. Uh, plenty of free loot along the way, uh, but the gear set here should be a really good one. Also, this is probably one of the most important things you're going to unlock. The three times auto fight speed, mwah, super duper nice. So we're going to try to get that as soon as we possibly can to really help the uh, auto fights and getting loot a little bit faster. So we're going to go back to the normal campaign today. After that, I'm not 100% sure. We can see where the storyline takes us. If it's not something we really want to do, um, I can always jump in and do some guild boss fights because I haven't really done any of those since the game made us do our very first one. So you haven't really got to see much of the progress in the guild boss fights, and those are very important. So with that said, before we jump into the campaign, I do have some upgrades to do. So as you can see, my energy has been absolutely friggin' decimated, and that's because I've been farming my balls off trying to get some legendary extracts. And wouldn't you know it, we got some. We didn't just get some, we've got four. And that means we can take two of our dudes up to promotion grade five. The two that we're going to take up today is going to be Ayn, Ayn, this bro, Mr. Pokemon, and Idril because she's useful in a lot of content and I like her. Um, outside of that, we'll probably promote some dudes up, but we can't do any more five stars quite yet. So let's go ahead and get this guy popped up. Another 2,000 health on this bro. That's going to be pretty friggin' sweet. Bam. There we go. So he's now as upgraded as I can possibly make him. 14,000 base h -paws. That's pretty freaking good. He's gained 2,000 power off of that. Um, but yeah, bro's looking pretty healthy now. 67% um, crit rate. We did farm up a little bit more gear. I've got, I got some really lucky rolls on some of this stuff. Obviously, attack bonus would have been stronger up here, but... This early on, this is a fantastic piece of gear for us to get. I've gotten a few that I've put on other people. A um, couple, couple legendaries, nothing too crazy yet. Uh, but all of it is making progress. So with that said, jump over here, pop this lady in, pop her up like boop. There we go. <sighs> Everyone's getting more powerful. 2,000 base attack. That's going to put her into a, ooh, over 5,000 damage. That's always nice. So that's good, and now I've got a bunch of promotion materials saved up because I've been farming like all of them, trying to get everybody promoted up to five, uh, at least four. Um, so we're going to take Dolores and Vortec up to promotion grade four as well. Get some extra raw stats, never a bad thing. Boom, boom, boom. Do the same thing for you. Boom. There we go. Looking better. And then we're going to probably actually promote this bro down here as well, just because I like him. He's useful. And that's all I need to say. So get up there, bud. You're going to be a four-star as well. Ah, feels good, don't it? His stats are still pretty low, but he is only a four-star. And he's also a rare. But either way, he has a lot of utility. His ult slowing people down. Good stuff. So there we go. That's all I really wanted to do for now. I do have enough to star somebody up to five-star. But I'm going to kind of wait on that for a little bit to see if we pull any good heroes this weekend. Um, or if I just want to dump them into Wrath, which I probably will end up doing. That said, it's time to do some campaign. So we're going to jump in here and we're going to go back to normal like absolute wiener nerds. And we're going to beat up probably to 610 um, just because hopefully the storyline doesn't make us go back even further. It might send us to hard mode again. We don't know. But let's go ahead and get this done. Shouldn't be too bad. 62,000 power. We are far beyond that now. Um, pop you out of here. Probably pop you out of here. Pop you in there. Pop you in there. I don't really carry Dolores for the campaign. Um, she is a good hero, but she's primarily, for me, good for bosses and some of the raids. Not so much the campaign. Um, although there's probably some areas where her boost is really nice in the campaign to help nuke bosses down pretty quickly. So we've got a little summoning portal up top. I'm just going to go ahead and put Idril up there to kind of deal with that early. So that he doesn't even get a chance to summon anybody, just like that. This guy's going to sneak in pretty quick. Might have to pop this guy down early. And we did, but that's okay. Try to sneak him in on me. Not today, bro. He's going to send someone from over here now. Try to make sure I'm blocking all my angles. I don't know. I'm not seeing anybody. So send another guy down from the top. We'll just go ahead and pop Navros like right here. That'll cover both of these areas. Oh, so we got a, we got a bit of a magic range damage dealer coming in here. It actually hits pretty hard, but not too worried about that. I think I'm going to pop Ain. 
I mean, I might as well just pop him here so we can cover that lane. Don't think it'll be too big of a deal. We'll pop this guy. Probably. We'll just probably pop him here. I don't even need him to go that way. I highly doubt Ain's gonna have any issue like stopping people from coming from the side. Um, three monsters at once. You'll probably like one poke them. Yeah, 18 friggin' thousand damage. I don't think we're gonna have an issue here. Uh, we'll pop Vortech here to heal these guys. If somebody does attack Boltus, we can always heal him as well. As you can see, this team right here, these two guys together, ain't nobody getting past that, at least not yet. Um, oh, he almost got the summon off. He's gonna open the portal. But that's about as far as he's gonna get. Mr. Pitchfork Bro, I believe these guys are the ones who do, uh, like they speed up. Yeah, they like start getting really fast when you hit them. Not too worried about it. Got some fast dudes coming up top, but Volt is taking care of those real quick like. And probably even pop him up here just for some extra damage. Um, yeah, not bad. Boop. I'm telling you what, dude. Navros is just such a freaking good hero. <sighs> I, need to, I, I need to just go ahead and start setting aside the heroes and start getting them promoted up so I can just fuse out another one um, so I can get him awakened. Because his awakening is also just really nice. It's like a permanent 20% crit rate, essentially, that he just always has active, which is freaking awesome. Um, but, oh, man, he's just such a good hero. There we go. 6-6 six, six, completed. 6-7 six, on its way to being completed. I really struggle to see us having any any issues on these these missions. Because we're, I mean, we're just like, we're double the power. We're, I think we're actually over double the power needed for them. They're going to make a summoner come out first. If so, I'll pop Eidreal down. Um, we do have two summoning places on this one, and then only one actual area where enemies come out. Um, so it is going to pop out a dude down here. We're just going to go ahead and take care of that with Eidreal real fast. Boop. Just like so. Got a dude coming in from up here. Probably just going to pop him like this. Pointing that way. He'll take care of anyone coming down this way, and I'll just put Borat over here in front of this, or I can wait on that, and maybe stick someone up top like this guy to take care of anyone that summons out of there. Because um, they're going to try to open up portals, and since the portals, like the enemies that come out of the portals don't count towards your, your progress in the mission, it's just kind of a waste of time. Um, probably ought to throw you, like, up here to get these guys going fast early, kind of speed them along. Are you going to be able to take this guy down? Yeah, you are. Perfect. There we go. Boop, boop. Perfect. We'll go ahead and pop you here. It's just kind of like... We'll pop you that way. Just as like a, a whoopsie-daisy if someone does try to sneak past. I don't think we're having an issue with it. Um, so far, it's just a couple summoners popping in. We're taking them out before they get to do anything. And that's generally how you want to deal with these. If it's possible to take these summoners out before they're able to summon units, that's just the way to do it. Otherwise, they can just constantly swarm you and it just it sucks. So... There's some missions, I think, in the... I want to say it's in... Oh, yeah. Remember, the Void Rift. Um, some of the Void Rift stages have summoners that summon out, like, monsters that fuse together and get, like, way stronger. So if you don't take care of, like, the summoners early, it's just... It makes the mission almost impossible. So keep that in mind. When you see those dudes, make those dudes no longer there. You know what I'm saying? Boom, there we go. Another quick, easy dub. 6-7 complete. 6-8 almost to be completed. We restart everything, right? Yeah, okay. Making sure I'm not missing anything. I'll have to go back and repeat missions. 160,000 battle power. I guess we're almost actually three times higher than what they're recommending. So we're going to absolutely blitz through these things. And hopefully we can get even higher in like the gear raids and start getting maybe even mythic gear eventually. Uh-oh. I've been talking and made a mistake. Take him down. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> that was that was sketchy. We're gonna pop you over here to do the same thing on these. Hopefully you can take them out before they get to summon monsters. Noise. And then call me crazy. I'm just gonna pop Volt this up here, covering this. I'm not even gonna defend my crystal yet with an actual person. I haven't needed to. Zap zap. <laughs> Still don't need to. Hoping this guy is strong enough. Okay, he's not. See, so he's going to start summoning out dudes for us. I guess. Now, we might as well put this guy down here. It'd be kind of dumb to put him anywhere else. Or do we put him, like, right here? That's probably better. So this guy doesn't quite put out enough damage to take this dude out immediately. Um, he does a pretty good job. I mean, <laughs> didn't get a summon that time, did he? Nope. 
No, we did not. I can't really reach him with anybody else. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'll probably just pop this guy here. Help Boltus take these guys down a little bit faster. Oh. I could also do something like that, huh? Just give him a little double paunch. I didn't know you could put fighters down over here. I wasn't paying attention. Um, that works. Eedrill's got that under control. Really no issue there. Pop your ult and start taking people out. Last three enemies coming in. Nothing really struggly there. Um, yeah, I didn't even realize you could put your fighters down there. That makes kind of sense. Just punch them out that way, but whatever. It all worked out. They only got to summon a couple dudes out of there, and it wasn't nothing big. They're just regular enemies. Um, it's not really a big deal until you get, like, enemies that fuse together, and oh, especially those missions with the, the Petrify, where the enemies, like, turn to stone once you get them down super low health. <laughs> That's annoying as crap. Um, <laughs> you'll, you'll see that later on for sure. Um, here we go. 6-9. Lots of summoning places, only one crystal to defend, shouldn't be a problem. Pretty much the same thing as last time, but slightly differently placed out. So we've got three different portals here. Um, hmm. How far, does he have to walk forward to summon here? I don't know. My question is, if I aim like this, is he out of range? He is. Okay, so that's good to know. Go ahead and pick her up. Just restart that I said <laughs> not just pick her up that means we'll probably won't be able to place her here aiming that way either but I'm gonna do it and try it ah it does work all right nerd we figured that one out <laughs> that's pretty quick pop this guy down probably do the same thing this way um, just like so did get the portal open but that's not a big deal so far no one's spawning in on these ones I could probably stick a fighter somewhere I can hmm how do I want to do it? Probably, oh, okay, we got dudes coming in on top. Probably want to prioritize making sure nobody sneaks their little sneakiness in because that wouldn't be good. So far, he didn't get a summon. That's fine. I have a couple enemies coming in on this bottom side. Probably just put like Voltus right here. He'll get everyone kind of moving fast and get that speed buff on him and then he'll just poke them down. This guy still got his portal open. I guess I could throw like... I don't really feel like I need to throw another fighter up top, though. I feel like she's going to take care of that, no problem. And these guys pretty much got that locked down. Whatever. We'll just do it like this. <laughs> One shots them. Nice. Just put you here. You can punch on those dudes. I guess we'll just put you up here. No. Yeah, whatever. No, that's a bad idea. What if it stops them? If it stops them from going down, that'll be annoying. So we'll just, we'll let it stay how it's going to stay. Get some, wow. That dude just got like instantly one shot. Um, he managed to summon somebody out. We've got a few enemies coming in. It won't matter. All of our damage down here. He did get shot by a bowman. Bowman doing a little bit of damage, but not a lot. Could pop you here. Be kind of wasteful. Pop you up here. You can heal this guy. He's not going to need it, but you can heal him if he did need it. But he's not going to. Okay, so we're about halfway through now. They kind of slow on bringing out the enemies. I'm assuming the reason for that is because they're expecting these people to be summoning bunches of enemies for you to fight. Um, so it takes you longer to beat them. And they're not trying to like flood you with a billion enemies at once um, early on in the campaign. But we're kind of getting kind of getting through them pretty quick. There we go. This is probably like the last wave coming up probably. Maybe. Probably. Yeah, this is probably be it. Okay, so these are the last four dudes. Just kidding last five dudes because that guy was there um, but yeah math is hard these guys are going down don't they'll beat us <laughs> take out Ain, take me home me not a problem all right so last one i think this one's going to be a boss wave could be wrong don't quote me on it because it's possible that i'm incorrect 15 more diamandes i'll take them i will absolutely take them it's not a boss wave. <laughs> I lied to you. Why do you ever listen to me? <laughs> we'll take this one down as well. Only one crystal to defend, but we have two different paths that lead to it. Uh, not really a problem. If I remember correctly, this is the one where they spawn big dudes in on the right side. Um, so you kind of want to put people to take him out early, and I might just do exactly that. Oop. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, perfect. That'll let him attack the dude that comes out of there on that side and we can always defend over here with someone and we should be okay these guys move kind of quick i'm gonna wait should be able to get ain out 
just like so. That means that he can cover both the spot in front of Ayn and this. I'll probably focus a little heavier on this side because it's the bigger enemies. Um, I'll probably end up actually... Hmm. If they just start walking, I'm not going to be able to hit them for very long. So maybe I want to do something like this and just do shoot them all the way around. Get you over here like so. And probably pop Voltus in on this side too. And we should be good to go. Where you at? There you are. Boop. Yeah. So I think these guys have high magic defense, if I'm correct. Um, the little bugs? Eh, not really. Okay, these ones do. The High Order Abyssal Beholders are more resistant to magic damage. Um, so, something to keep in mind. Physical damage and uh, your piercing damage will do just be a little more effective against them. It's not like it doesn't do any damage. It's just, you know, you'll get better bang for your buck the other way. Could I just... I could. I could just pop him right here. Just start punching guys in the face as soon as they... Like, hey, what's up? Bam! Right in the face. <laughs> Wake up. Get the healer down just in case he's probably going to get hit pretty hard. He might just get one shot. I don't know how hard these big octopus head looking dudes are going to do to us, but we'll see. Did he just walk right past him? Did bro just sneak right around my dude? He was like on a sprint and he just... He just out of there. He was gone. He was going around the whole map. <laughs> that was crazy. He didn't, give a, he didn't give a crap that you were here. Unbelievable. He's about to just let him get away with it. Yeah, you can see Voltus is doing very little damage here, um, and he's doing quite a bit. Well, quite a bit. Even His stats are much lower, but he's still hitting just about as hard, if not harder, than Voltus, who definitely has more stats on him right now. Um, but that's just the magic defense. Again, not a huge deal. We got it. Three minutes, dose seconds, even faster than last time. Ooh. We unlock something new? I guess we have. But what is it? It's this button. <laughs> Spectral Rift. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I remember that. So they have a little... What's going to happen? Oh, my goodness. A portal! The Spectral Rift. Um, okay, so this is like a little... I guess it's kind of like a side campaign. It's a campaign on the side of the campaign. The power level is pretty normal here, um, but there is a little bonus loot if you like complete like a special thing. Um, eliminate the Goblin Thief. Thief. <laughs> Words. <laughs> thief. Um, is going to give you a summoning crystal for doing that. So there's like a goblin that spawns at the end who's like sprints his way around the map as fast as possible. And if you kill him before he gets to your crystal, um, you get a summoning crystal for it. That's nice. We can probably knock that out. Um, I would assume probably just in one day. Just take all of those down. You also get an extra summoning crystal for three starring each mission. A little bit of energy, a little bit of gold. Nothing crazy. Um, not quite as rewarding as the main campaign's loot is, but still not bad. Go ahead and snag those out. And that leads us to our storyline quests. How far can we get? Oh my gosh, another one? <laughs> well, you shouldn't have. Okay, stage four in Gear Raid 2. Mm. We do need to do Gear Raid 2. We have not done any Gear Raid 2. I kind of want to do a guild boss, though. What if we just did both? What if we did, like, a guild boss and some gear raid? Mm. Let's try that way. Let's do the guild boss first, just because I kind of want to do one. I haven't done one um, since, like, it made us do it. And the team's obviously come a long way since then. I haven't really talked a whole lot about the guild bosses. So this guild is absolutely decimating the vast majority of bosses. Um, unfortunately, I can't fight, like, the super high-level bosses because my team dies. Um, and I can't do any damage to them. Um, but when bosses like this are dead, 0% health, you get double rewards when you collect your loot the next day, and your rewards are going to be based on how much damage you deal to the boss. So obviously, the lower level chests, these are the chances of things you can get. You get two rewards from each chest. If you get two chests, you can get four items. Um, and the big rewards up top, the doing the most damage, obviously is far more rewarding. You can get your legendary extracts and stuff like that. Um, Sigic powers, five-star Sigic powers. Obviously, diamonds are a big deal. Summoning crystals. Um, so very, 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 very important to make sure you're in a guild that does take care of your guild bosses each day and also to make sure you're using your guild attacks smart. Um, don't just attack one dude twice. It doesn't make sense unless you can only attack like the easy boss and you can't do normal yet. Then I guess use both your tokens here and easy. Um, but you always want to attack two different bosses because it's going to double the amount of loot you get. So we're going to do a normal because I've done normal before. I know I can beat normal. I'm not sure how much more damage I'll be doing now that I've changed my team up. 
So I doubt I'm gonna need Rex in this. You don't really need tanks too often, almost ever in these modes. I'm gonna throw him in here for sure, but you only get to put eight people down. Um, I'm definitely gonna put two healers in, definitely putting two fighters in. So it really is gonna be between who's my range units I'm gonna be attacking with. Actually, Dolores is 100% going down as well. Um, we'll go ahead and just start the battle and I'll try to figure it out as I go. I probably won't place Voltus this time and uh, Maureen. I'm, I think I'm gonna keep her because she does have a, a vulnerability with her basic attack that makes them take increased damage. Um, so here we go, big red bro. Rawr. Cool looking boss, honestly. Um, but we're gonna go ahead, get this going, put this guy down in the front, put you down behind him. Um, I like to start my guild boss fights in one time speed, by the way, just because it is helpful um, to do that. It lets you get all your units down as fast as possible and not have to worry about like missing out on damage windows and whatnot. Um, so healers, I like to put a healer in this spot all the time because it covers a lot of the area, but nothing can attack from here and actually hit the boss. Um, so important to keep that in mind. Gonna throw Navras here, gonna throw Dolores here to buff the attack of all these guys, kind of my big damage dealers. Gonna stick you in right back here, and I'm gonna stick you in right here so that you can also hit him. And there's everybody set up. Shouldn't be, you know, I'm, we're not gonna lose anyone, I wouldn't think, on this. I'd be pretty shocked if we did, because this is only the normal boss. Um, but I kind of walk you through a little bit of the mechanics. You can see these little things popping up here. These are the debuffs I'm putting on him, the slow, doesn't really affect him much, but the magic damage and physical damage taken is increased by 10%. That's coming from Mari. Um, that's not Mari, that's Dolores. Um, but it comes from my little ice chick. She doesn't do a lot of damage herself, but she does increase the damage the rest of my team does, so that's kind of nice. Um, he's gonna pop a shield here pretty quick, probably right about now. When he does this, that's when you want to put out your damage. Because once that shield breaks and he goes down, he's in a weakened state and he takes increased damage from all your units. Um, that's obviously good. That's where you can get a lot of your damage. Um, every 10,000 damage dealt gives you one blood point. Um, so, you know, I guess you can calculate how much damage you buy the blood. I just look at the end and see how much damage I did. I do like to pop, um, what's her face? Hollow, I like to pop her ability pretty often just to get everyone's rage meter building back up. I totally did not pop Edril in that fight or in that little weakness spot. That's my bad. Probably be a little bit lower on the damage this time, but I'm not gonna pop it right now. I'll wait till we break the shield again, just because I'll get a little bit more damage out of it then. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, I couldn't throw this in 2x. Um, you can see he does do a couple different attacks. The dragon gets different attacks the higher the difficulty gets. Um, in normal, he mostly does like the little swipe with his hand and then he'll do a, a spit attack that hits people on the platform tiles. Um, once they get higher, he has like a roar that does tremendous damage to everybody, and then like a meteorite that burns everyone. Um, he gets much, much, much harder to deal with later on, and his shields get massive. I believe Nightmare 3's biggest shield's like three and a half million health to break, and if you don't break it, he will one-shot your whole team. Um, so, gotta break that shield. Should be coming up on another shield any minute now. Yep, perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and pop everybody this time and not be dumb. There we go, now everyone's dealing damage. Um, I haven't popped Vortex ability. Um, his is just a heal, so it's not like a really big deal for damage or anything. Um, in the later stages, saving your healer's ultimates for when big damage is about to come into your team is the key to surviving some of the big attacks. We'll go ahead and pop her ability so she can start filling everybody's rage meters back up. I'm already at almost 500 blood points, so substantially higher than my first attempts have gone. Um, hopefully, Navros' damage is looking pretty good. He is one of my highest built units right now, and even though he's kind of like an AoE mage, um, he does do pretty solid single target damage. I wouldn't be surprised if he outdamaged both Edril and Ain in this. Um, he's also six star, so it's not necessarily a fair comparison. But like you can see, um, if I really wanted to, I could pop Vortex ability, and it would heal everyone up, and you get all these shields popped on your dudes. Really nice. Um, Edril's just a little bit outside of his attack range, so she doesn't get the shield. Oops. Um, normally, I don't just run two fighters, so there's no one on this tile. It's usually another fighter up here. I don't know. Just thought I'd bring that up. I usually don't have this many platform units, because it doesn't make it kind of hard to heal them all. That said, should be getting his last shield here in a second, and then we'll go ahead and pop all of our damage abilities again, and then we'll run through the last little bit. I don't think he gets Infernal Roar in normal. Um, he might, but I just, I just don't think it's true. Here we go, 150,000 health on that last shield. We broke it really fast, so you don't get a, a good chance to see it, but it does show you how much shield he has. Um, go ahead and pop her ability, get some 
So Billy's coming back up. Now, once you get him through this last shield, he's not going to pop another one. So you don't have to worry about like saving all your ults up. As you kind of get them, you can use them um, just to go ahead and get as much damage as you possibly can out. Um, we're doing pretty good though. 750 blood points. <laughs> I'm not upset at that at all. That's pretty good. Um, we'll probably attack hard later tonight. Um, probably won't do it on camera just because, but I do want to get some gear raid two in because I did have someone actually request gear raid two because we were kind of stuck there. Um, so hopefully we can make it happen even though our team is not really geared toward gear raid two. Um, because, there he goes, there's his infernal roar. You can see how it does absolutely massive damage to everybody. This is a good time to pop your healer's ults um, and get everyone healed up a little bit. Because you don't want your dudes to die. If they die, obviously your damage is going to go down. And that's never good news. About 30 seconds left in this fight. We'll go ahead and pop her. Like so. To catch the tail into Navros's ult with her attack boost. And then we'll pop Eadril as well. Another roar. Um, the further you get up in the thing, he'll stop doing that dragon claw swipe entirely. And he'll just alternate between like the big roar and like meteorites. Um, got Ain's ability coming up here. Go ahead and pop that real fast. And this should finish us out the last few seconds. I mean, sure. Go ahead. Um, ah, I broke 900. There we go. Perfect. Ha ha ha. New PP. Forgot what I was saying. But gear raid 2. Generally speaking, you want good tanks and good healers for that. Dang, we did 27% of his health. Get wrecked, nerd. <laughs> Let's check out our stats on that. Ooh, Ain actually was putting out some serious deeps. 3 million damage. But Navros coming in close second with 2.6 mil. Um, Idril kind of down low. Then we got these guys. Um, healers, obviously, she doesn't really heal much. That's not really her thing. She's there just for the attack boost. But that's not bad. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, 902 damage is uh, quite a bit more than I think the 220 necessary for the top chest. But, I don't know, maybe we'll get someone to hit this as well and kind of knock it down. Maybe we'll get lucky, grab some diamonds. Um, but we'll do a heart attack later just to guarantee we get two loots. I'm assuming we'll probably be able to top chest that one as well. Um, prior to this, I haven't been able to. My team died um, and I did a little less damage. So I was sitting right around 300 damage um, per run. So I wasn't quite getting my way to the top loot. But now we should be able to. And that's great. But let's move on to gear raid two. Need to do it for the storyline. Don't want to ignore it. And the first four stages shouldn't be that bad anyway. I clicked the wrong button. Buttons are hard to click. There we go. Gear raid dose. So we only really have like one tank. Um, as you can see, the game recommends tanks and healers. Um, Livian is a good tank. I definitely want to snag me out of Livian eventually, but we do have both of these healers and that's going to be nice for us. It'll make this quite a bit easier. We're going to go ahead and jump in here. I'm not going to bring Dolores for this. I just don't feel like she's needed. Um, yeah, there's a boss in this, but I don't know. I just don't feel like she brings enough to the table. She's more of a liability than an asset. We only have one crystal to defend, which is great. So I'm actually going to open up with my fighter, um, even though they will take way more damage from these dudes here. And I'm going to probably go ahead and throw out Rex in front of him like that. I could also put Rex back here and have Ain poking this way, but having Ain behind somebody actually boosts his damage um, when people are in front of him. So you might as well. So here's the golem. He does damage to everybody while he's back here. He'll like smack the ground and hurt everyone. Uh, it doesn't do as much damage to ground units as it does to platform units. As you can see, it doesn't do very much here at all. But if I put out a healer, well, it's not doing much more damage to him either right now. Later in the, <laughs> later on, these guys will take significantly more damage from that attack. And it's very hard to keep people alive. Usually what ends up happening is your platform units just get killed um, and you can't keep them alive at all. And that stinks. We'll go ahead and pop him in here like this and we can probably pop him let's pop him eh. Eh, we'll do it like this that's probably yeah it wasn't useless it actually worked but there we go probably pop a hollow over here on this side to heal up navros not that he's really going to take any damage from this guy it's gonna be a pretty easy go i would say and then we can throw in like if we want to just kind of cover all that and then maybe cover over here as well just get some early damage on people. Not worried about these guys, you know, getting killed or anything. Um, we're just kind of try to speed through the first couple missions. Get through the, the general idea of how the raid works. It's not, like, super complicated. But, man, this guy's nice. Slowing down everybody. He's able to just kind of clean up a whole side by himself. And he's just a little lowly goblin. Yeah, he's not taking much damage here. Later on, obviously, we'll be a little smarter with our placement of our healer. He would probably be here in this situation healing everyone. Um, but there we go. Boss got to move all of, like, 1.2 steps. And then he died. Um, there we go. The reason I don't really focus gear raid too early is because the gear sets that come out of it really suck. Um, they're not good. Um, 
let's look at this one. Yeah, so Rage Regen on attack plus two is just not very not very good. I'd much rather have 10% more damage or 10% damage reduction. Um, so I really leave this raid alone in terms of like how hard I push it until I can unlock um, stage 10. Because stage 10 starts dropping different gear sets. You have the AoE damage plus 18%, not bad. Um, you've got Fatality, which ignores defense and magic resistance and also a small boost to your attack percentage. That's also not bad. And you have the Guardian set, which is a 15% damage reduction. Also pretty good. There's more sets that you unlock later down the deal. Um, you start getting more and more stuff. Um, but is there any anything? Yeah, then you start getting like tier two stuff. I don't have any of that stuff yet. Um, but yeah, the first like nine stages of Gear Raid 2 are largely useless because lowering a unit's cost by one or increasing their rage regen by two per attack isn't that powerful. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, push this up to stage four. Like I said, we shouldn't have any issue, especially this early on. I could probably completely ignore defending my crystal and just put like damage units out and be okay. Um, but these guys will eventually hit really hard. They actually get replaced by like rock golems and stuff. And those guys are crazy. Um, they do insane damage. Um, but yeah, he's just like shooting them one time and they're like, what's up? And then they're dead. So like I said, not really anything to worry about. Probably just gonna pop him on this side like this to cover all of that. Then I'll throw a healer over here. He's doing almost 100 damage now, not very much. In the later stages, you don't place out this many damage dealing units early. You get like a tank out and then you get a healer out like immediately thereafter. Um, because if you don't, you're, they're just gonna die. Um, even tanks with huge HP and huge defense can get absolutely wrecked by the mobs at this raid spawns. Um, so the, the key to success here is having really good tanks and really good healers and having somewhat tanky damage dealers. Um, having like a little extra HP on your damage dealer isn't bad for this raid, so they don't get like one shot by his little ground smacks and stuff. And then they'll have like units that throw rocks at your platform units. Those can do some tremendous damage. So um, being able to survive that is a really big, uh, a big component to your success slash losses. Hmm, I guess we just go ahead and pop her in here. Help out a little bit. Pop you over here on this side. Help out a little bit. Not that you really need to help out a little bit, but, you know. Here he comes. You've already done 7% damage to him. You don't do almost any damage at all while he has this shield up. But once he gets angry and yells and the shield goes away, um, he takes... Yeah. <laughs> he gets wrecked. So, <laughs> pretty easy. That was what? Is that stage... Is that stage 3? Or is that stage 2? I don't remember. Is it... I don't know if we've done stage 1 on it yet. This might... That might have just been stage 2. There's a good chance of that. Was it? We'll see. It was. Okay, so we still got two more to go. They won't be bad. 60,000 power, 80. That one's actually a little bit higher, but not too worried about it. I would like to fuse Olivian up, though. <sighs> but do I want to fuse Livian first or another Navros? That's the real question. Do I want more damage or do I want better tank? Probably it would be smart to have better tank, but, you know, being smart's not always fun. <laughs> Okay, so we'll go ahead and pop him down. I'm going to angle him up this way this time, just so we can hit these guys back here. Not quite one shot him anymore, it's just pretty close. See how much damage this guy's doing now, before I commit to dropping a bunch of dudes down. I don't think he's going to do enough damage to be worried. Yeah, 134 damage per smack. Not that big of a deal. We'll go ahead and pop him up here, like so. Cover both of those. Pop you like this, and then we'll probably pop Hollow over here and just kind of repeat exactly what we did last time. It worked. If it works... Don't change it. That's generally the best advice I can give you. If what you're doing is working, there's no need to optimize it unless you're just trying to make like faster clear times or something. Um, but yeah, we're not too worried about this. We're going to be farming it anyway, so not that big a deal. Pop you in like that. And then we'll probably do... He's taking 279 damage. Must have less defense. We'll pop you over here. You can cover that and... We may have to put another fighter out or a tank eventually. Right now, nothing's even really getting towards Ain, and if they do, he just pokes them from like two tiles out, and it's not a problem. And I believe would hit, does it show you his ultimate's ability if you toggle it? Yes. So Navras has an interesting ultimate ability that attacks behind him, like in a big circle of three. Um, kind of a nice thing, I didn't really show that earlier. Um, that's his basic attack range, that's his ult attack range. So he can technically attack behind him, which is really useful in some stages um, for clearing things out. Um, so just keep that in mind. Another nice thing about Navras, you know, he's got so many good things going for him already, but in this case, it gets even better. So here we go. He's gonna walk in, take some damage, get poked, 
fall over. And then we do this one more time, and that'll probably be where we end the video today. Gear raid two up to stage four, completed, and then, yeah, we we got the campaign kind of done. Hopefully it doesn't send us back to normal again. I'd like to get more into hard to get more diamonds, more summoning crystals, and more of those four star strategic powers, but you gotta do what the storyline wants you to do, because those rewards, they're good. So here we go, we're still done. <laughs> I look at 80,000 power and I'm like, ah, that's a big jump, but I keep forgetting we're, we have 160,000 power. Like we're, we're doing fine. Put this guy down here. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing I did last time. Not gonna worry about changing things up yet. Pop you here, like so. Boop. Soften those guys up. By soften up, I mean make sure they don't even make it to aim. But we're gonna see what his damage does this time. Might pop a healer out before we do a second damage dealer, just depending. Hey, he's still not hitting very hard at all. I'm not worried about it. Go ahead and get our damage out and we'll pop a healer like so. Keep these guys alive and we'll pop hollow over here and just rinse and repeat, same thing. Um, but yeah, big key if you're struggling in this one, make sure that you have tanks and healers up to par. Right now we're so overpowered over the difficulty that we're supposed to be at that we're getting away with having like a fighter down here um, and not even like a super tanky fighter. You can use like Abomination's a very tanky fighter. He can take stuff like this. Um, Volka, pretty tanky fighter. You can use her in situations like this as well. But, you know. Yeah. We don't have to worry about it too much. They're not really getting there to attack us. But if they were actually getting here and putting damage down, you definitely want a really solid tank built with high health, built with high defense. Um, Olag is a free epic hero you're going to get. Uh, we'll get one later in the Void Rift. Um, he's a guaranteed get for everybody. He is probably like the best epic tank in the game. He's a freak. He gives himself massive shields. He has great defense, great health. Um, so really, really good unit. Dead. Um, but yeah, so if you're struggling, you'll eventually get a really good tank for this regardless. But Livian and Olag together are probably two tanks that are good enough to hold their own in this, probably all the way through that gear rate 18, if you're feeling crazy. You get quite a few diamonds out of doing this, though, for the first time clears, so that's nice. But that was stage four, not bad at all. We could keep going and get it down to six. Oh, dude, we're already running kind of long. I think we'll probably cut it here. Um, I could go to six in case an event pops up where you need gear from gear raid two, because being able to get legendary gear, even though it is crappy legendary gear, does give you points for the event. I'm not gonna worry about it right now. I think we're gonna call it there. We're already like running like, 40 minutes deep, uh, but good news. Storyline progressed twice or three times or something. Mr. Hardy did that, did that a long time ago, brother. But there we go. Okay, so it's wanting us to complete and get epic gear out of gear raid two. So obviously going too higher would have been nice to make that easier. I'll probably try to do that off camera and come back and hopefully we'll have some good gear to show for it. But with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget, smash that thumbs up button and show your support and I will see you guys in the next one.